Welcome to another session of Microwave Engineering. Today we are going to deal with strip line components. Please note we are not going to go into design of strip line. We are not going to implement any strip lines. We are just going to discuss this design of strip lines. Uh, in papers we are expecting uh, problems on uh, the dimensions will be given. You are supposed to find epsilon r that is the constant of the medium or Characteristic impedance can be also asked. So we will be solving some similar type of problems. For this, the reference book referred is POSER. To first understand what is a strip line component is that we are going to have a width, a strip of width W that will be placed between two, uh, that will be sandwiched between the two layers. And we will be seeing that this will be supporting TEM propagation. TEM means transverse electromagnetic wave of propagation. The transverse wave, for example, I will just show you the diagram. Uh, over here, we are going to have a strip. A strip is being sandwiched between two ground planes, which is separated by a distance small b. And uh, the advantages of this is that this type of uh, strip line component will always supports TEM propagation, but it is also, also observed that it supports higher order modes. You can see over here, this strip line, this way electric field is being, can you see this, this arrows, these arrows are nothing but electric field. See the way it is moving, it is moving from the strip towards outside, towards the ground plane. This is called as a radiating strip and that will be radiating out to the electric field outside. Magnetic field is always shown in the form of coils. The formulas that are required for such type of strip line form, uh, form uh, strip line components are as follows. Uh, first, you need to know about the Z0, the characteristic impedance. Uh, there is no derivation for this subject, uh, sorry, for this topic. These are empirical formulas, means some uh, scientists must have done some experiments number of times and some after doing many number of times getting a constant value, those becomes the empirical formula. So we have no option, you have to have long formulas, lengthy formulas for this topic. We are expecting some problems this time because last time in the paper it was not there. So we are expecting this time some problems on it. The characteristic impedance is given by the formula 30 pi upon square root of epsilon r b. That is the distance between the substrate b and w e is the effective width plus 0.441 b. Now uh, effective width w e upon b is given by w by b. Can you see it is different, divided into two uh, classes that is w by b greater than 0.35 and w by b less than 0.35. Now, uh, when a problem is given, you are first supposed to find out it falls into which category. Does it fall into greater than category or does it fall into small, uh, less than category? Depending on that, the formula should be adjusted and Z0 should be calculated. Students normally do a mistake. They do not care which class it belongs and start solving the problems. That's wrong. You should always check for W by B, whether it is greater than or less than because you can see there is a difference of uh, 0.35 minus W by B the whole square. So you should be careful. After getting W by B, we are also supposed to find about the value of small x. Now I'll tell you what this is. While we are designing the strip line components, we are supposed to know the epsilon r and this characteristic impedance of the uh, of the uh, strip line components. There are two ways of addressing this design. One that uh, the W by B will be given to you. You are supposed to find Z naught. That is one set of problems. So that problems also we are going to discuss. The second set of problems is that we are supposed to find the phase shift of a uh, of the phase shift that is uh, generated by this strip line components. That also we are supposed to design. Uh, that problem also we are going to take. So if for the phase shift type of problems, they will be giving you epsilon r. They will be giving you epsilon r and z naught. So your duty should be first find out whether they are less than or greater than 120 ohms. If it is less than the formula is you are supposed to find small x, you are supposed to find small x. If they are greater than, then the formula is 0.85 minus square root of 0.6 minus x. All these formulas are uh, given in your poser book. So normally when I solve problems in the class, this is how I do it. I give the question to the students and this PDF should be there with them. And they directly look at the formula and tell them which formula to apply and why we are applying and they solve the problems. This is what we do. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to explain these formulas to you. And after that, I'm expecting that this PDF should be there before you while you are solving the problems. And we'll solve the problems together. That will be easy. 
uh, after doing this, after finding your x or w by b, we move on to the next type. Uh, in this, uh, what is alpha? Alpha means always attenuation in microwave. So alpha means attenuation. There are two types of attenuation. One is due to dielectric constant, that formula I will discuss. And the other one is due to the conductor losses. Conductor losses, that is because of the copper which is present. So for that also you have, you can see uh, very, very uh, lengthy formulas over here and you can expect problems also on this. Uh, we have, if your square root of epsilon r, z0 is less than 120, you have to depend on capital A. Can you see this? And this A is this small lengthy form, uh, I'm sorry, it's a lengthy formula. Of course, and if it is greater than 120 ohms, then you have to go for the B, B formula over here. So you need to buy out these formulas. We have no option for it. Now let's uh, start with a uh, uh, problem. First, the problem given is that find the width for a 50 ohm copper strip line conductor with B is equal to 0.32 centimeter and epsilon R 0.2.2. Dielectric loss tangent is 0 0.001 and operating frequency is 10 gigahertz. Calculate the attenuation in dB by del. It's, it's a simple problem, don't worry. The formulas are already given to you all. You just have to substitute. There is no trick as such in this uh, problems because the formulas are lengthy. So as I told you, in this, since they have given you epsilon r, you can see where since they have already given you epsilon r and z0, your duty should be to find square root of epsilon r z0 and find out whether it is less than 120 or it is greater than 120. So in this, we have solved it and we found out it is less than 120. So it comes in the category of you have to find x, small x. If you remember that formula, as I told you, they found out x and found out as 0 0.830. The formula sheet, it was given w is equal to, w by x is equal to b. So they have solved it and they got the strip width 0.266 centimeter. Maybe in compulsory question, question number one, they can ask you small problems in this way in which you are supposed to find the width of a strip line component. So you should be well versed with these formulas. Now we are, they are not asking only that much. They want to know the attenuation. So how will you go for the attenuation? If you remember, there also alpha C and alpha D was there. Alpha C, if you remember, was depending again on that concept of square root of epsilon R Z naught. You have to find square root epsilon r z0 is greater than 120 or less than 120. Here it is already clear it is less than 120. So you will be using the uh, a or b depending on the formulas. Let's see. What have we found out over here is that to find alpha d, I told you that is dielectric constant, we require k tan delta upon 2. What is this tan delta? Don't get surprised, tan delta is given in the question. It is uh, 0 0.001 that's called as your dielectric loss. That is loss tangent. Uh, directly loss tangent gives you an idea that how much lossy your material is. So that value normally is 0 0.001. If it is not given also, please assume it as 0 0.001. And uh, to find this, you need the value of k. Can you see k? k we have solved it as, what is k? k is nothing but like beta. What is beta? Beta is propagation constant is equal to 2 pi by lambda. So this 2 pi by lambda, this is 2 pi by lambda, but lambda can be written as C by F. So this 2 pi by lambda, this C is not just in vacuum. It is a dielectric material. A dielectric constant is given to you. So your C becomes C upon square root of epsilon naught. C upon, so uh, your uh, lambda is not the normal C by F. So I'm just writing that lambda is C upon square root of square root of epsilon. So that is why you got this. You can just check it out. That is why it is becoming like this. So you got this formula. While solving you get 310.6 meter raised to minus 1. You will put this value in the uh, alpha d and get the value of alpha d. Now alpha c is a big formula if you remember and for this we require capital A. So that formula was given to you all. You will find uh, square root of epsilon r z0 as less than 120. So in that formula, A was required and A has been calculated. A has been calculated, substituted, and then finally you get the value of alpha C. So this is a long procedure. You have to find alpha D, you will find alpha C. The summation of both will give you the total attenuation constant. But you have, um, yeah, that is in NEPERS. And when you are taking it in dB, alpha formula in dBs is given as 20, 20 log e raised to alpha 2.1 so answer comes out 2.1 db per meter please note one thing over here 
this alpha in dv is not a usual formula this is not a usual formula it is something different for example 20 log e these two are two different concepts this e when you write this is the natural log in ln concept so you should be careful when you do this so you'll get the answer as dv by meter and they ask in uh, the general alpha meaning they are not asking per meter they ask you total alpha so you just have to multiply by the total length you have got just multiply it and you get the answer as 0 0.049 dv per lambda this is a maximum twist they can ask you in strip line components. You need not worry. So you just have to go through these problems, solve it very nicely. By practicing only, you will get microwave. You, just by looking at one time, you will not understand microwave. So it is better. Please do go on practicing the same problems again and again. Mostly it has been observed in universities. Similar problems come. Right? Let's move to the next type of problems. In second type of problem, which I have not solved, I'm expecting you people to solve. I want you to find out the Z0 for this uh, component. Now, uh, the value of epsilon R is given to you. I want you to find out Z0. So how will you start? The problem will be solved. It's a very simple concept. You have the formula of Z0 being given in that W E by B was asked. So in W by E by B depends upon W by B. And that W by B is given to you all find out whether it is less than or greater than 0.35 accordingly solve and you can tell me the answer in that uh, form which i am going to submit in your mcq okay all the best thank you